the Imperial Guard. In a universe filled to the brim with monstrous threats from demonic armies and hordes of aliens, what can one person do? In the case of the Imperial Guard, a person can grab a mostly unimpressive weapon, strap on some mostly unimpressive armor, and stand beside their brothers and sisters against the hordes. Members of the Guard don't possess the genetic superiority of the Space Marines, or the fearsome technology of the Mechanicus, but what they possess in spades is courage. The Guard is a large part of what keeps the Imperium of Man going in the 41st millennium, assisting in defeating the Imperium's enemies, and more importantly, holding territory, something the much less numerous Space Marines are generally incapable of doing. The Imperial Guard have a storied history, participating in many of the Imperium's greatest battles. The Imperial Guard got its start as the Imperial Army during the Great Crusade led by the Emperor of Mankind. Large numbers of new planets were being conquered, reclaimed, or rediscovered during the Crusade, and the Space Marine chapters were spread too thin to be able to hold them all effectively. The Imperial Army was formed as a collection of volunteers, mercenaries, and other soldiers that now belonged to the Imperium. Planets, now part of the Imperium, would be forced to continually supply new recruits to the Army, and eventually the Imperial Army became more than a defensive body, and turned into a full branch of Imperial military might. The Army controlled their own warships, and became capable of conquering entire worlds by themselves, in the name of the Imperium. This changed with the events of the Horus Heresy, as the Imperial Army's autonomy allowed a large percentage of them to turn coat and become a fully-fledged threat. In possession of their own warships, armored units, and countless infantry, the Traitor Army became a significant threat to the Imperium they recently fought for. In the aftermath, the restructured Imperial government took steps to prevent a similar threat from popping up in the future. The Imperial Army was split up into two separate groups. The Imperial Navy that would handle all spacefaring vessels and any conflicts in space, and the Imperial Guard that would handle all conflicts on planetary surfaces. The two branches of course worked together to further the goals of the Imperium. But if one of the groups should betray the Imperium, they would be essentially handicapped without the other branch. Additionally, the Guard and the Navy were both further compartmentalized, broken down into smaller regiments and fleets. The unity of the Imperial Army was sacrificed in the name of security, for better or worse. The High Lords of Terra oversee the broad commands of the Imperial Guard. The Lord Commander Militant passes on these orders to the individuals in charge of each segmentum of Imperial Space, of which there are five, and the orders are then passed down to those in command of each section, subsection, and planet. While the sheer scale of the Imperial Guard is often a benefit when it comes to firepower, it's a detriment when it comes to speed. The bureaucracy of the Guard is incredibly cumbersome and slow-moving combined with the great distances that the Guard has to cover. Orders may arrive to a regiment of the Guard far after they're relevant, and so command often falls directly on the leaders of any given theater of war. Specific orders from the High Lords of Terra may crop up occasionally, but generally the goals of the Guard are pretty clear. Protect all the good guys, kill all the bad guys, and the Imperial Guard are certainly pretty good at killing. Any given soldier in the Guard is generally grossly outmatched by the opposition, whether it's a muscle-bound orc that can fight through horrific injuries, a massive tyrannid hive tyrant capable of easily shredding a space marine, or a chaos-warped space marine bolstered by the powers of the Dark God. What allows the Guardsmen to be victorious against these threats is their courage, loyalty, and perhaps most importantly, their numbers. The number of Imperial Guardsmen active at any given time stands easily in the billions, and in fact it's likely that the administration of the Guard don't even know the number. 
The sheer scale of their operations is practically unfathomable to us, as battles in which millions of guardsmen die are everyday occurrences. It's said by some that there are as many individuals in the administrative body of the guard as there are in the guard itself. And while that might be hyperbole, it is true that the Imperial Guard requires a massive number of people to handle all of its logistics. Training new troops, creating new regiments, provision of equipment and supplies, working with the Imperial Navy for transportation and assistance, handling the tithes paid by each Imperial planet for the Guard, and responding to calls for aid are all roles handled by the administration. Well, it's an incredible feat that this machine of war keeps running. It's even more impressive when you consider the sheer number of mistakes that the administration makes. Regiments sent into inhospitable environments without proper gear, sent into battle against overwhelming foes or even into battles with no foes at all, missing supply shipments, calls for aid ignored for decades, and the list goes on. This is not to say that the administration is incompetent, but rather just another side effect of dealing with billions and billions of individuals battling across an entire galaxy. The amount of paperwork and logistical efforts involved in this war machine is mind-boggling, and even an extremely small error can result in an entire regiment of soldiers dying. To both the soldiers credit, as well as the administration, the Imperial Guard perseveres, an operational feat unrivaled by any other group in the galaxy. The standard issue weapon for a member of the Imperial Guard infantry is known as a Laze Gun, or Laz Gun, a reliable, easy to maintain and produce laser rifle that is quite deadly by our standards, but mostly unimpressive by 40k standards. Laze Guns utilize rechargeable power packs for ammunition and are capable of severing human limbs or even piercing power armor if hit in a vulnerable spot. Unfortunately, most alien threats to the Imperium are capable of shrugging off a few laser gun blasts, but we can again point to the sheer number of soldiers the guard throws at an enemy, which allows them to eventually succeed. Similarly, most guardsmen are equipped with a cheap and easy to manufacture body armor called Flak armor. Much like the Lay's guns, this armor would be very, very nice to have in our time, and it's certainly serviceable in 40k, but still won't do much to stop a raging Tyranid or Chaos Space Marine. The Guard are bolstered by armored transports, battle tanks, siege artillery, and plenty of other military vehicles you'd expect to find in a futuristic army. These are the standard members of the Imperial Guard, however, and like any organization, there are going to be those that excel over their peers. The best of the best of the Imperial Guard are known as stormtroopers, elite shock troops trained to carry out covert missions behind enemy lines or to spearhead assaults into heavily fortified positions. They receive better training, better equipment, and are instilled with a brutal sense of duty and obedience to their missions. They're generally equipped with carapace armor, a much more substantial form of protection over flak armor, and an enhanced form of laser gun, commonly called a hell gun, powered by a backpack power supply and capable of punching straight through power armor. The stormtroopers are among the most capable of normal humans in battle and have been responsible for some incredible tasks. Another non-standard group of the Guard are the Commissars, military officers placed among regiments to maintain morale and discipline. These are generally uncompromising individuals that keep a regiment in line through fear and power, and possess the authority to execute any Guardsman for showing cowardice or incompetence. As you can imagine, Commissars are not generally well-loved figures, but they are unflinching in their duties, and ultimately they are responsible for making sure the Guardsmen continue to fight, even against overwhelming odds. Most of the Imperial Guard is just one massive, faceless organization of countless identical soldiers, 
But there are a handful of regiments that have made a name for themselves through their deeds. The Death Corps of Krieg come from an atomic blasted world and undergo brutal training from shortly after birth, designed to harden their bodies and their minds, as well as instilling absolute faith in the Emperor. They routinely request a fight in the deadliest war zones and excel in long battles of attrition. The Katakan jungle fighters hail from the death world of Katakan, said to be the most lethal planet in the entire galaxy. The planet is covered in a dense jungle, and every element of the local flora and fauna is deadly to human life, to the point of even most space marines tend to avoid visiting. This makes the planet fairly safe from any invading force, and also creates some of the most deadly men in the Imperium. The jungle fighters are extremely capable of fighting in jungle terrain, and also excel at adapting to other war zones. It's said that only 25% of those born on Katakan make it past the age of 10, and the jungle fighters claim that even the most suicidal military engagement is nothing compared to a day on Katakan. Perhaps the regiment with the greatest reputation, however, are the Cadian Shock Troopers, originally hailing from the fortress world of Cadia. Cadia certainly deserves its own video, but in short, it was a planet located near the Eye of Terror, a massive warp rift, making it a frequent target of chaos assaults. The people of Cadia were practically constantly under attack and were trained from childhood to defend their planet for the sake of the Imperium and the Emperor. Cadia was eventually destroyed after a massive battle during a crusade by the forces of chaos, but the members of the Imperial Guard went down fighting, and it's commonly said that the planet broke before the Guard did. Soldiers throughout history have stared death in the face and stood their ground. But it's a different thing entirely to face off against such threats as seen in Warhammer 40k. While no one doubts the courage of a space marine, they are clad in power armor and are genetically modified super soldiers that are incapable of actually feeling fear, which diminishes their heroism somewhat. In comparison, the average guardsman is strictly human, through and through, and yet still stands his ground out of loyalty to the Imperium and to the Emperor, or perhaps because they just don't want to be shot by their Commissar. Either way, the Imperial Guard is one of the most impressive aspects of Warhammer 40k, partly due to their capability of bloodshed, partly due to the courage and loyalty of its soldiers, and partly due to the fact that an army of that size hasn't collapsed in on itself yet.